Welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you um, what all this redstone does. So I'm going to be going through what pretty much every bit of redstone component does. Well, I might miss out a little bit, but I tr I'm going to go through as much as I can. So first thing is normal redstone line. You can change it. It's just a normal redstone line, it transmits redstone. This is a repeater. This, you could say, in the name, it repeats the redstone. So if I get maybe a button or something. So it sends out an impulse through here. To here. Now how it works is the redstone goes through here it loses a bit of power so right here it's at 15 ticks 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 goes through here and it's back to 15 so it kind of recharges in a way and can, these can also be used for timers as well so Each one is three ticks, so it takes a certain amount of time for the redstone to pass through. It's much slower than just a normal redstone line that's pretty much in instant. So that's pretty much what the repeater does. It's a very useful item in redstone. Now here's the wooden button and the stone button. They're quite similar, except this one. This one you can shoot an arrow. So if I get a bow, you can shoot an arrow, and that will trigger this one. But a stone button, nothing will happen. It's the same with the stone pressure plate, and also the new black stone. An arrow won't do anything. When the wood pressure plate, it triggers the redstone. Now this is a lever. Back and forward. That will turn on and off the redstone. This is how a redstone lever works. It can also be used to... So if there's a piston here, you don't want that redstone line going into the piston. What you can do is you can put a lever here, or you could just put it anywhere really. You could put it here, and then the piston here won't be won't be powered. That's that will stop. That's another useful lever. It just stops stops it stops the redstone from going into things you don't want it to go into. Next, the uh, redstone torch, a very useful item. It transmits power. You can stick it on the wall, the ground. And so this is a little circuit here. You can also turn them off if you. Because if, that redstone torch is powering this block, which, which is turning off this redstone torch here. You can turn off redstone torches and you can also make. Um, Redstone blocks with them. Very useful in that sort of sense. Redstone block. It's a movable so redstone source. Unlike these, which you can't really move with a piston, but redstone blocks you can. They they used to be used in flying machines, but now we've got the observer. So they're not really used. They're used a little bit, but not too much these days. Now here is. Here is the daylight detector. I don't really use these anymore. They're not really very useful, but it can tell you when it's day or when it's night. So right now it's in night mode. So if I switch it to day mode, it will glow. It will transmit redstone, a redstone signal during the day. But if I switch it to night mode, which is blue, it would only do it during the night. It can be used in 
some redstone contraptions, but not too many. Now here's the lightweight pressure plate and the heavyweight pressure plate. Now these aren't very useful, really, but how it works is you put a certain amount of objects on them and they'll transmit a certain redstone signal compared to the amount of objects on here. They're not really too useful, but there's better items out there which can do their job much better like using hoppers and stuff like that so these aren't really too useful I wouldn't advise using these here's a trip wire when you walk through it, it transmits redstone it's, it's useful for traps because it's hard to see if you're just running along you won't be able to see that very easily unless you look really quite carefully now next is a door you might not think of a door as redstone, but it's in the redstone area, so it is counted as redstone. It opens like this, or you can open it like this. But with the iron door, you can't open it by right clicking it, you have to put the power source into it. Now, these trap doors are quite similar, you can open it like this but you can't do the same with this with the iron you have to transmit redstone into it now this is a gate now gates they're counted as redstone as you can see they're in this area here they open close or you can just open it like this I actually used this in the AFK fish farm design as you can you just have to do this, and that's how the fish farm worked. But this is the gate. Good thing about gates compared to doors is villagers can open doors, but they can't open gates. So that's something you can use it for. You can use it to stop villagers from getting out. Um, next is the trap chest. Not really used too often, but when you open it, it transmits a redstone signal. Quite good for making traps, but. I haven't used one of them in ages. Now the new block, the target block. Shoot an arrow at it, and wherever you hit it will transmit a different redstone signal. So if I hit it at the edge there, it's a really low redstone signal. If I hit it at the middle, it's a long, it's a big redstone signal, but it only lasts a few seconds. And that's why it glow it. So if I show you again. So the redstone lamp glowed. Now on to the next thing. A lectern. Now lecterns you you can count them as redstone. Then the redstone section. Right here. Now, these are normally used with comparators. Now, whatever page you're on, it will transmit a certain redstone sig signal. We're going to page one. See, that's one. So that's one. That's page one. It can only get up to here. Let's get to page fifteen. and the signal can reach all the way over here to 15 this is an observer they are used in many different builds like flying machines, crop bombs lots of different builds now, that's just a basic example now, this is a one tick pulse they also work with pistons I should so it just observes what that what's there. If some if there's a change like that, it'll glow. Works with doors too. A dropper. It just drops items. Now our hoppers. They move items to whatever the arrow here is pointing to. 
So they've ended up up here. And you can you you can get items into chests. So yeah, these are hoppers. Next, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a brief explanation of what um, comparators do. So they can be used. So right now it's at one tick. Move it up. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Then the next one should make the redstone. Watch it's already off. I think it was the fifth one that turned off. So it just all it does is it takes a signal from this and lays out a redstone signal compared to whatever the output of this is. They can also be used with lecterns too, like I showed earlier. Now, if you put it in negative mode, um, this, all it does, all negative mode is, is, so it just might, so it will just, so if you have the value 15 here, and you have 14 there, the output would be 1, because 15 minus 14 equals 1. If I do that now, so it's at 15 now, 14, should be a signal of 1. If I do 15 minus 9, or 15 minus 9, that's 6, so the signal should make it to 6, which it has. So that's what what neg this negative mode is. It just takes the input from that and that and minuses it. So it's not as confusing as you'd think before. It's more of just, it just uses maths to calculate it. So let's move on. So it's the redstone lamp, it turns off and on, it has a slight delay when it turns off, as you can see there, it turns on straight away, but it turns off with a slight delay. It's a dispenser, it's quite, quite a useful item, it can sh shoot arrows, and it shoots them randomly which could be used to make a random genera generator if you add in the target block too and you can also dispense out animals too, like wolves this is the piston, this is a normal piston it moves blocks but it won't take them back it can move them in any direction this is the sticky piston it will move blocks and then pull them back This is a sticky piston pulling slimes. This will show you the limit of the amount of blocks. So you can only push and pull back a limit of 12 blocks. It won't be able to move any more than that. That's the limit. It's the note block. It, whenever you put, whenever you send a redstone impulse into it. It will make a noise, and they, you can go through the different types of noises. Right now, this noise is so I'm using dirt to get this noise. If it was on, why did I do that? If it was on, if I was on the sandstone, it'd make that noise. So I thought it'd be nicer if I could get a nicer sound. It's easier to hear. And that won't change the sound at all. It's TNT. 
this explodes when the signal goes into it. And as you can see, I've done that before. Now this is a normal rail, it's counted as red, so you can put minecarts on this. You can ride in minecarts. This is power rail. It's already powered, so unlike normal rail, powered rail will move the minecart. This is activator rail. Whenever it will just activate anything inside here, so any mobs inside the minecart, if they go on the activator rail, they'll just be flinged out. It's used for that. And also TNT minecart, TNT will explode. Now this is activator rail. Whenever there's a minecart on on it, it will transmit a redstone signal. Which will maybe it will light up this lamp, but it can be hooked up to anything. As you can see here, I've added a small delay, but that's most of the redstone I covered today. And this is most it's mostly just all the stuff in this area here, and some bits in here which I thought of as working as redstone. So most of the rails and everything like that and I hope this is useful for all you people who want to start building a bit of redstone start with that sort of stuff and I want to thank you for watching